And so uh, with that, you're ready to use the perfect close. And the perfect close is really simple. The first question is basically, Welcome back to the Talking Sales series, and I've got James Muir with me again. Good day, James. Hey, great being on. Thanks for having me back. Hey, James. Uh, I just wanted to you know, get into what you see as the best practices in closing in sales. Well, I have my thoughts, but I think we can definitively now say that it has been scientifically proven which method is the best. There's a company out there called Gong.io, and I'm sure you've heard of them. These guys do call analytics for outbound call centers, right? They do outbound sales calls. And what they did is they analyzed over a million calls looking for the answer to this question. What is the best closing approach that there is? And what they discovered after analyzing a million sales calls is that the perfect close, which is the one that I'm sure you read about in my book, um, is hands down the best closing approach that there is and that the top performers are actually using it about three times per hour. And I probably viewers and listeners will also appreciate knowing that um, it's just two questions it's zero pressure and it's completely non-confrontational, right? And it's, it's very effective, right? Along the 90 percentile. So um, with that little maybe teaser, yeah. let's, let's tell them what it is, right? So the, the, it, uh, what the Gong Dio came up with, and by the way, I, I discovered it long before that. And then I ultimately wrote it in a book in, in 2016, uh, which is the perfect close. Um, and, and maybe before we tell them what the questions are, right? The closing questions, maybe we should say this. It's kind of important to know what you want the outcome to be in your sales call before you go in there, <laughs> right? You might want, what do you mean? What do you want to happen as a result of your sales call? And the, the, the best practice is have an ideal advance, like what's the best possible thing that could happen? And then you want to have a couple of alternatives just in case, you know, for some reason, what you think is the ideal advance is unrealistic for the customer for some reason, okay? So th that's like the, a little bit like having a backup plan, okay? And so uh, with that, you're ready to use the perfect close. And the perfect close is really simple. The first question is basically, does it make sense for us to X? Where X is your ideal advance, right? So if I, if I was working with John, I might say, hey, John, you know, does it make sense for us to schedule an assessment, right? To see what our best options are. In that example, the assessment is the X, right? right. And, if you, and if you think about it, there's only two things they, they can say. They're either gonna say yes, right? If, 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 and if that's the case, awesome right? Um, you just got your advance, your ideal advance with one question. Okay. You didn't even have to use the second one. Um, or they're going to say no. And if they say no, then you're just going to ask some variation of the second question. And that second question is, okay, well, uh, what do you think is a good next step then? <laughs> okay. And what I can tell you is that after hundreds of ride-alongs with salespeople, what will happen is in 90% of cases, the customer will suggest a very logical next step for where they're at in their buying process okay now these both can be upgraded a little bit but basically this is this is the thing that they learn at gong.io is does it make you know does it make sense for us too and then whatever your advance or whatever your next step is is um and maybe i should say why that's important um a uh, famous author and scientist neil rackham discovered that in a complex sale um, most sales encounters don't end with a win or a lose. That's, that's not what happens. What happens in nine out of 10 sales encounters is we either end up with an advance where the sale moves forward in a little way, or we get something that he called a continuation where this, there's no progress made, but the sale's not dead either. It's just kind of sitting there, right? A lot of the listeners that we're talking to right now are, are, are working on sales lead times that can be three, four months, up to a year or more. Uh, so yes, you're absolutely right. And so what you're saying is every step of that way, you're closing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And in a, in a large complex sale that might take place over a year, there could be 40, 50 minor advances uh, in order before we get to the point where we're actually getting a closed contract. Okay. Uh, but you are saying you should be closing every step of the way. Yeah. It, you're, what you're closing on is the next step, right? Yeah. That's appropriate for the customer. And what makes this effective is you think about before you go into the, your next meeting, okay, what's the best What's the, you know, what's the single biggest best step I could possibly help the customer with right now? That's your ideal advance. And then you think, okay, well, what if that turns out to not work out? What, what else could I ask that would keep the ball rolling? And those are the alternatives. And maybe now we can tell them, there's some, there's some variations of the perfect close. And one of them is called the fallback. So if the customer says no, what you can say instead is you, instead of just throwing the ball back to them and say, okay, what do you think is a good next step? Which will work, right? You could say instead, you know, other customers at this stage tend to do this other thing. Does it make sense for us to do that? 
And so then that's when you're using your other alternative advance. And so wh why that's helpful is a lot of these B2B complex sales that you and I are involved with is the customers only buy these kinds of solutions maybe once in a lifetime. They're really not very experienced at purchasing the thing that we're selling. And so our suggesting a logical next step for them is actually being very helpful and facilitative for them. Right. And so uh, us saying, hey, you know, other, at this stage, you know, a lot of clients will have us do this. Does it make sense for us to do that? We're just sort of priming their thinking about maybe what a good logical next step is. A, a question on one thing, though, a question you on one thing. Um, a lot of the, the, the buyers these days are, are very experienced at buying. Maybe not what you're the, the, not maybe not the solution for this particular problem that they're addressing. But they are experienced at buying and big corporates have all sorts of buying processes and, <laughs> and decision making uh, processes and so on uh, and the way in which they evaluate and, and so on. So they are experienced at buying. It's just maybe not in what you're selling right now. Correct. Right. So I, I used to be involved in very large enterprise healthcare information systems that would be sell to hospital systems. And so hospital systems don't buy new information systems every year. In fact, they might maybe once every 10 years and it, before when there was no computers, it was the first one they'd ever bought. Right. And so they're not all that good at doing it. They, they've bought other things. So they do RFPs and they have purchasers and things like that. But both RFPs and purchasers can make the sales process very dysfunctional because those people very come in with a very myopic perspective about just trying to save money. And there's a lot more to the solution than just the cost of it. Well, that's what discovery is all about, isn't it? If we're doing bingo, Neil Reckham was really was expert at put, you know, how, how do you do the spin selling uh, model and, and do a really great discovery and you know, down the hole and understand the organization and their, and their current situation problems and issues and the implications and then moving up uh, through what I call as a thinking journey to helping the customer visualize a new way of doing this. That's what selling is to me. Yes, it's, a, it's facilitating, right? They're thinking through it. And uh, you can uh, be a better facilitator during your discovery by asking certain questions. And those questions, guys, aren't things like how many beds do you have or how many employees you have? Those kinds of things you should be finding on the internet. It's asking questions like, as you weigh through all the different priorities that you're looking at right now, how are you going to decide which one is the, is, is the most important? Well, they may have never even thought the answer to that question until you ask that question. And so that's a very value-adding question because you're actually helping them think through exactly how they're going to prioritize things or and there's there's lots of different ways of asking these kinds of questions but these are value adding questions that actually take cpu cycles on the behalf of the customer but they actually walk out of the meeting feeling better and smarter than when they, when they when, when you went in and so the meeting itself becomes inherently valuable because you've asked the right kinds of questions that enable their thinking uh, I, I something i push very hard for all salespeople to think about is you've got to create value for the customer in every conversation and, and more often than not, if we, we haven't got that mindset, we go in, we make the meeting about ourselves and getting information, whatever it is, and, and the customer walks out and says, well, yeah, I'm not sure I got much out of that meeting. Uh, do I really want to talk to this individual again? Creating that will, value every meeting is critical. And that will backfire on you. If you don't add value in every encounter, what they'll start to think is that you're really not useful for anything other than the price. And so I can't even tell you the number of times I've heard a complaint from a salesperson say, gosh, I was working with this customer. And then after I sent them the proposal, they went radio silent on me. And the reason for that is they weren't adding any value throughout the whole process. And so when the customer got the proposal, they thought, oh, that's the last useful thing you can tell me. So, and, and whose fault is that? If you weren't adding any value throughout the entire process, maybe they're right, right? Maybe, maybe that is the most valuable thing that you can give them. So you, you shouldn't be surprised if they stop talking to you. But if you're adding value in every single interaction, they're going to value you even, you know, like you, you can make, you can screw things up or they, it, they can even go in a different direction, but they'll come back to you because you are, you yourself are adding value to the process. And so that's an important aspect that, that uh, as professional sellers, we should aspire to. So um, let's, start, let's sum up. So we, we talked there through a number of activities through the buying journey and our sales process. Uh, we talked about creating value in the meeting, but we, we started about that, talking about what, what's the perfect close? Uh, and and you, uh, you outlined two different close questions there. Can you just repeat those to close the, the discussion? Thanks. Sure. There's actually five variations of the perfect close. So the kindergarten version is, does it make sense for us to X? And if they say no to that question, you ask them, okay, well, what do you think is a good next step? That can be upgraded with suggestions. You can say, you know, other clients at this stage tend to do X. Does it make sense for us to do X? Okay. That's a suggestion. There's one called the add-on 
Whereas once they say yes to so the first thing, you can go to one of your other alternatives. And you can say, okay, well, you know what? Clients at this stage also sometimes do this other thing. Does it make sense to do that too? And then you can get two or three, right? And then at the end of the add-on, you know, with the fallback, you just throw the customer the, the ball and you say, hey, well, what do you think is a good next step? With the add-on at the end, you say, are there any other logical steps we should be thinking about right now? And what that, that does is it lets the customer suggest to you something that's, that makes sense to them that maybe you didn't think about. And so I, I've had cases where um, we thought we were even presenting to the wrong people. And after we got our three advances, I just asked that customer, say, hey, well, what do you think is going to accept? And the guy says, well, is there any chance we get a copy of your agreement? Because our legal people are kind of slow. And I'm like, holy smokes, I would have never dreamed, right, in a, in a lifetime that it would have been appropriate to ask this guy for a contract. But by letting him, by throwing the ball to him and asking him if there was any lost steps, he, I got three advances and then he suggested a fourth one, which involved a contract, right? So that's the beauty of the add-on is you're basically in a Zen-like fashion. You're just going at the pace of the customer's ready to go. If you want to go, if they want to go slower, we go slower. If they want to go faster, we go faster. Okay. So, and, and the bottom line is as you go through a buying journey, a, a sales process, you need to close at every encounter using that sort of method. Is that, and that's what you're saying. Yep, and I would maybe uh, add this little uh, you know, postmark to that is that the right close is the one the customer's ready for. It's when we start to push them faster than they're ready for, that's when it starts to feel like manipulation to them. But when we're doing it this way, we're saying, does it make sense? At, yep. at its core, does it make sense? It's just a timing question. They can't really say no to your action because you're not asking them to do that yet. You're just saying, is the timing right for us to do this? Yep. Which means they can never reject your advance. They can only reject the timing of it. And that is a huge, huge upgrade over virtually all the other different closing methods that are out there. James, great advice. I'm looking forward to publishing this one. Uh, I think the audience will get a lot of value. Appreciate it. Thank you. It's great being on.